freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law, human rights. These are the true values that unite our continent. But just as these fundamental values have their champions, they too have their opponents. That's why we've come to Trafalgar Square today, the scene of national, uh, the centre of national democracy and protest. With a hundred years of important and necessary acts of protest and solidarity before us. I wish it were not the case, but contributing to that legacy of protest is deeply, deeply necessary today. So today, we join citizens across Europe to oppose Putin's aggressive war in Ukraine. Because it cannot be that President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine must put their very lives on the line. London stands with Ukraine. 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 Ukraine will win. 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 Do you know I, I think that one of the most important things that we have as humans is we unite in shock and rage when we see the images from Ukraine. And together we salute all Ukrainians for your courage and your humanity. We stand with you. We stand with Ukraine today. Hello London, and thank you Mayor Khan Yusadik for bringing us all together even from- Must win. So never think that standing and voicing your belief equals doing not much, it means doing everything. However, there's more, there is more. We are asking people to carry on donating to UNICEF, you can see the signs around you. You've heard today that Ukraine. We support the millions of people whose lives have been shattered by conflict and we offer our unwavering support and solidarity. Stand with Ukraine. Soon. We're going to hear next from the CEO of Runnymede, which is a champion for race equality. Please welcome Halima Begum. Hello London, can you hear me? Great, that's what I wanted to hear. London here in scrimps and numbers and for people like my dad, who's 84, who isn't here, I hope you're watching at home dad. London is my city and London has never let me down. London stands up for all the principles that I've cared about. What are those principles? Standing for the people of Ukraine when it matters most. Standing for principles that we need to live in a world free of war. And it doesn't matter who we're going to stand up against. Whether it's the leader of Russia, one of the strongest countries in the world, or whether we stand up against others. So thank you, London, for coming out today. I want to say to you that I look forward to that day when we can welcome President Zelensky to this city as a hero. And we know what that means. All of us, when we see him leading his people across the Ukraine and fighting, we're all thinking, when is he going to come and visit us? And when is that ceasefire going to happen? So I hope, pray with everyone here that we can look forward to his return here and a cessation of conflict. What I'll also say today is this. While we're in the middle of war and trying to come up with a strategy to, to stand back and support the people of Ukraine, this isn't going to be a short-term ceasefire. There are orphans, vulnerable children, refugees, so many people that need our support. So that means thinking about a refugee policy that welcomes all of us. A refugee policy that doesn't distinguish between who is documented, who is undocumented. A refugee policy that doesn't stop children at the borders because guess what, a child hasn't got documentation, but his or her or their parent has. 
So let's look forward to a humane refugee policy because you can't stand up for principles if you cannot show the right principles on your own borders. I know a little bit of Ukrainian language too. So this is an opportunity for London, for the UK to become even more diverse, even more multicultural. Inform yourselves, come to demonstrations, use reliable sources of information, speak to your neighbors, speak to your colleagues at home, bring them to these demos, show your solidarity. The question now asked of us is, will we as a country stay true to our values and defend the rights of our neighbors? For me, for the European movement, the answer to this is rooted in our belief that a closer, more united and peaceful Europe is in all of our interests. For one day, our children and our grandchildren will learn about this horrifying war in their history lessons. They will come home and ask us, what did we do in these times that mattered? What did we do when we saw a senseless, immoral and illegal attack on our neighbour? I want to be able to look my children in the eye and say I and all of us here did everything we could. That we spoke up, that we protested, that we marched, that we donated, petitioned and demanded action, that we opened our homes, our arms and we brought the world closer together. That is the duty of all of us here. And whilst it's easy for opponents of peace to say that Putin doesn't care about what's happening here today or that he isn't listening, the world is watching. The people, the people of Ukraine are listening and they are looking for hope. They need to know we are on their side. I am certain of this. The only route to a peaceful future is one where we can unite with our neighbours in Europe and around the world. And that means me, that means you, that means all of us here today, together, protecting and fighting for Ukraine's right to live in a peaceful and united Europe. So today, together, as Britons, as Europeans and internationalists, we tell the world that Ukraine is with us and we are with them. Today, today, together, we tell Putin he will fail. Today, together, we draw the line. Today, together, and each day until Ukraine prevails. Thank you. both of you for signing and making sure that this message is literally for everyone. The world of arts and culture have rallied behind this cause. There's been lots of events, different places, the Roundhouse, South Bank Centre, here at Trafalgar Square before today. And it is important, of course, that we not only think with our logic and with our facts, but with the grown-ups for Ukraine. And for all the children in Ukraine, so desperately vulnerable at the moment, we think it's a night and day, don't we? Um, dear Londoners, um, it's a sort of postcard to President Zelensky who asked us to march, did he not? And here we are. We are listening. Uh, we think of you every day. Um, we pray for you every day, even those of us who don't pray, like me, are praying. Um, for now, 
We march and we send you all our love, our support, our admiration and our determination to help you rebuild in whatever way we can when the time comes, which it will come and soon. This poem I'm going to read is called NN. It's by Taras Shevchenko. And of Ukrainian artists, a poet, a painter, a playwright, born, interestingly, a serf, and he became a great national artist but was exiled for writing poems that satirized the oppression of Ukraine by Russia and which, in fact, prophesied a revolution. He wrote this poem in 1847 while he was in exile. So it's, it's quite sad, just warning you. The sun sets and dark the mountains become. The little bird hushes, the plain has grown dumb. The people rejoice that slumber is nearing and I look and I fly with my heart in my dreaming to a dark orchard in far Ukraine. I fly there, I fly there, pondering deeply and it seems that my heart is at rest, has grown tranquil. Dark shadows have spread over plain, mountain and grove. A star twinkles out in the blue, high above. Star, oh star, and the bitter tears rain. And hast thou then risen too over Ukraine? Do the dark eyes search for thee yet in the blue heavens, or did they forget? May they slumber forever if they have forgotten, never to hear of my pitiful fortune. Stand with me, pray. We're now going to hear from the ambassador of Ukraine, His Excellency Barim Prisiko, who's doing such an incredible job representing his brave nation at this time of crisis. I can't believe he's had any sleep. He actually looks quite dapper and he's raring to go. Your Excellency. We should cherish it, each and every moment of it. Same perfect sky would be seen over Ukraine today. If only you could see through the screen of smoke and dust in the bombed cities of Kharkiv or Kiev. Or allow yourself out of bomb shelter in the seashore resort town of Mariupol, besieged now, leveled up to the ground by the Russian bombardment. It has been only over the months since Russia launched its war against Ukraine. Starting from the day one, Russia started to bombard our cities, our civilians, civilian infrastructure, kindergartens, hospitals, schools, grocery stores. Civilians who have perished so far numbered in thousands. There are personal tragedies beyond any measure. There have been confirmed 134 kids killed already. Almost 300 of them have been wounded. These are conservative estimates. The real figures are even more appalling. Millions, millions of Ukrainians already have forced to leave their homes. This includes half of all Ukrainian kids. Well, over 3 million Ukrainians already left the country. Make no mistake. If Russia is done with Ukraine, it will go further to West. As the previous horns promised, these swarms must and will be stopped. Period. No appeasement. No arguing with them. No warning. Not even analyzed anymore. Just stop. In this war, Ukraine must be held in every way possible as a moral obligation and an honorary duty 
the whole Western civilization, indeed the whole world, must unite and help heroic fight of Ukraine. I thank the United Kingdom for giving us and continue to give great support. I thank for many benefactors and volunteers that contributed into this just cause. I thank each and every British family who have opened their hearts and homes for displaced Ukrainians. I know there are so many of you here today. Thank you. It will never be forgotten. Your deeds are incredible. You are saving the whole Ukrainian nation. I urge you to keep up the good work. Military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine must continue. The sanctions must continue. Be upheld and increased until Russian economy has stopped in its tracks and can no longer watch wage the war against us. Until that regime of war criminals gives away. Until they are both all of them brought to justice and condemned. Until the last citizen of Russia who supported the killing of Ukrainian innocent civilians has experienced the consequences. Until the feet of clay on which that evil empire stays will crack and crumble into dust. We must stand strong and united to repel Russian aggression. Neither side afford to lose. This is win or die. We must be a light against evil, the truth against lie. Just like in every whole book ever written, we must be a good to confront evil. We must prevail. Dear friends, before I finish, please allow me to say a couple of words to those Ukrainians who already found their place here, who already came to UK. Dear Ukrainians, Thank you. Thank you all to come and to express solidarity with Ukraine. Let us take this wonderful spirit of today gathering even further. Tomorrow there will be a global charity TV marathon in support of Ukraine. It is set to start around 4 p.m. and it will be broadcasted on the big screens at the Jewel Tower next to the Parliament. The marathon will start in Poland by its major TV outlet and will be broadcasted with, along with musical performance and some addresses. It's not a big secret that President Zelensky will address this marathon tomorrow. Thank you to everybody. Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Coming to Ukrainians here. Ukrainians in Ukraine really feel your support. And it's really important to keep showing that support and keep showing that solidarity as those people continue to fight, not just the armed forces, but ordinary civilians like you, like me, like all of us here. Thank you.
Well, today we are all Ukrainian. You know, a few days ago, President Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, asked people from across the world to take to the streets to show solidarity. He asked us to take up Ukrainian symbols, to show our support to Ukraine, to show our support for freedom, to show our support to life. He asked us to turn up in our squares. He asked us to be visible and heard. Well, London has responded to that call. You know, I see, I see before me a sea of blue and yellow, and you look beautiful. A sea of humanity, a sea of people of all ages, all backgrounds, all ethnicities, all nationalities, coming together to send a powerful message. We stand with the people of Ukraine. We condemn Putin's barbaric aggression. We will stay with you in your struggle for freedom, democracy, and your safe country. And let me send a message loud and clear. London will always welcome refugees. Now I have a special friend, I have a special friend who's joining us from a bunker in Kyiv. He's a heavyweight, he's the mayor of Kyiv, Mr. Gori Kiska! Hi. So he's coming from a bunker in Kyiv. We don't know whether you can hear the connection. You love him anyway. No sound. Shall we just wait a little bit? Yes. Yes. yes.
We're trying to reconnect. This is a thousand times more frustrating for him than for you to think of the security issues he's putting himself through and the d desire he has to make connection with you, even if it's just a few seconds, how much it will mean to him. See if we can connect. Whether we stand with Ukraine, we stand with Ukraine, stand with Ukraine, we 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 stand with Ukraine. 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 So on behalf of the mayor. The strength and the resolve, not just of Vitaly Klitschko, but of all Ukrainians. And it's really important, we're trying to get Vitaly on the phone. Uh, he's keen to speak to you. He's keen to thank you for your solidarity. He's keen to make sure that Ukraine's darkest hour that Ukraine and the people of Ukraine aren't forgotten about. What's quite clear to me and to us is that the future of Ukraine should not be decided by Putin, but by the people of Ukraine themselves. They should not be decided by force, but by freedom. Thank you very much. Not just in our country, in Ukraine, even in Europe. We depend right now, not just on dependency and turtle and turtle. We depend right now the same way and the same principles what brought Russian Federation. That's why, please. Keep together with our country. Keep together with Ukraine. It's our key for freedom. It's our key for peace in Ukraine and peace in Europe. Very great for you. Proactive position right now in and unity is our key for freedom and peace in Ukraine. Thank you for everyone. And let those be the last words and good afternoon and thank you.
Украине! Героям слава! Слава Галенский! Украина за winner!